Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to your daily news update from the Frankfurt office of CMC Markets. Well, equity markets are actually quite bullish in the past days. If you look at the DAX, if you look at the Dow Jones, they have been going up several days in a row now, which is driven by the running earnings season. There will be Apple this week, but there have been 110 uh, companies out of the S&P 500 reporting earnings, and they have been going up. They have been growing by 3.8% on average, which is a surprise because over the past six quarters, the earnings of the S&P 500 have been dropping. There has been an earnings recession. And this quarter and this earnings season could mark the end of that earnings recession, which is quite bullish because it somehow just a bit at least justifies the high valuations that we got in the equity markets. Valuations is something that China doesn't really take um, or doesn't really care about much in their somehow crazy takeover spree that they are um, engaging in. Um, there have been billions and billions flowing out of China and into Europe and into the United States. Globally, they have been uh, engaging in mergers and acquisitions um, on a high scale. And that is quite understandable because if you look at the US dollar versus the renminbi, the Chinese currency, then you see that the US dollar is making a series of higher highs and higher lows, um, and then another higher high, higher low, and then another higher high. So there is a continuous devaluation of the Chinese renminbi, and everybody who has made money in that economic boom in China in the past decade is actually fearing that they lose buying power because of that continuing uh, devaluation and everybody expects that this devaluation of the renminbi is just continuing and uh, so they try to make or try to bring money out of the country and uh, that is the one factor another factor is that there are rate expectations actually at 70 percent for a fed rate hike in december they have been holding above 60 percent persistently over the past weeks and now they go up to 70 percent so markets somehow have accepted that there will be a rate hike which is strengthening the US dollar and weakening the renminbi and somehow fueling that M&A um, spree mergers and acquisitions since the start of the year amount to $207 billion. So that is one trend in world trade. Another trend in world trade is the um, somehow possible collapse between or in the trade uh, negotiations over a trade deal between Canada and the European Union that is about to collapse. Then there are less advanced talks between the EU and um, the United States, um, which are questionable if they really lead to some sort of common ground. And then there is another like important discussions about to start between the EU and London, of course, uh, the Brexit negotiations. Uh, UK already threatened to half the corporate tax rate if, they, if, if Brussels, does, Brussels does not really, um, is not really open to uh, or whatever the demands might be. So there is one trend and there is, that is more protectionism, which is a questionable trend in my opinion. When it comes to markets, gold yesterday uh, spiked up, but then went down right where it started. So that was a failed attempt to rebreak the 200-day moving average, the exponential weighted moving average on 200 days. That is at 1268 right now. And um, the bulls must somehow try to rebreak that MA, uh, that moving average, because if they don't do um, the longs that are still in that market might lose um, might lose it somehow and get nervous and drop long positions. So that is a technically bearish development that we had in the past days and we also had yesterday because the markets tried to go above the moving average, tried to go to 1270, which they managed to do. And then everybody who went in on that spike actually expected that there would be a follow on buying. And they saw well, there's no follow on buy-in and so they dropped their positions back to where they were. Might, might try to attempt today, might try to re-attempt tomorrow, but with every day that um, there is a failed attempt to re-break and uh, regain that support line, 
um, the risk actually rises that there, there will be another drop in the price of gold. So that is something to uh, watch closely, um, as well as the crude price, which uh, actually went down yesterday, which is a continuation of that consolidation in the uh, West Texas Intermediate, as well as Brent crude oil. Iraq was actually the dampener yesterday in, in the mood the markets have. Iraq wants a, um, an exception from the, um, uh, from the uh, OPEC production cuts that should come at the end of November because the Iraq is actually saying, okay, we've got ISIS, we've got, we, we uh, got ISIS who sold our oil and now we, we somehow um, regained that oil and now we want to sell it and not somehow like do not want to uh, hold up to any uh, production cuts right now. So they want a war exemption, but that also automatically raises the question if there might be other OPEC members who also have some sort of reason why they want to have an exemption. And so it's all about the OPEC discipline and the, um, yeah, the, uh, the, if they are really able to hold on to their production cuts, which they want to do at the end of, ex uh, end of, no uh, end of November. Uh, they will meet um, at the half-year meeting in Vienna at the end of November and then they want to cut by um, around 1 million barrels per day. But that will all only work if the OPEC member states will um, join in and really cut their production. So um, the price of Brent crude and uh, WTI are continuing their consolidation. I think that we need, need clear signals from the OPEC that uh, the cartel is able to really um, cut the production uh, for the price of uh, crude to go up and break out of that consolidation pattern.